I'm going to use um, black craft paint and yellow golden fluid acrylics. So both acrylics and probably some other colors at some point, but this is what I'm going to start with. Maybe. I'm just going to fill this whole thing with different types of trees. So, first, I'll do, let's do like a, let's do a little one over here. <clears throat> I'm going to start with my black and I've just got like a cloth over here that I'm going to wipe off on. I'm going to start with the, let's get close, squeaky. I'm going to start with the tree trunk. And this is just black. Oh, and this is a number two fan brush. It's bristle. It comes in a set of, I don't know, five or six other brushes. Same type of brushes, just different sizes. So this is another one that comes with it. This one's a little bit softer. I mean, it's still bristle, but it's bigger, so it feels softer. And I can do two different types of this tree, or two different, like, shapes. Um, so at the top, I'm going to use just the corner of my brush because it's smaller at the top. I'm going to tap like this. And then when I get down here, I can move to the broader side. Just going to get the shape of the tree in here for now, and then I can come back in and add details and make it look nicer. Now with the corner of my brush again, I'm going to, just the corner, start here and just drag it out and down. And I'm painting on paper, so the texture is a little bit different than what I'm used to because I don't ever paint on paper, but it still works. Drag it down. So these are looking really thick through there, so I don't want that. I'm going to break it up. And I'm going to try to do the same thing to this side, but it's a little bit harder because I'm right-handed. I don't get the same motion on this side. Somebody recommended uh, turning it upside down, turning my easel upside down and doing it, but I don't think it would be worth all that.
little bare spot right there. All right, while that's dry, I'm gonna go ahead and block in this other one, another little tree. I'm gonna do this one um, going straight up. Not straight up, but like the branches curved up. <clears throat> So corner of my brush again, and then I gradually move to the broad side. I'm holding the brush 90 degrees to the paper. And now with the corner of the brush, I'm going to swoop upwards. This brush might be a little bit too big for that. So I'm going to switch to this small flat one. Oh, that's much better because it's so much smaller. Flip up. So swoop or like push down and then flip up. These are really small. If, you, if I was making these a little bit bigger, you could get more detail in there, but I don't want to paint a bunch of huge trees. Just trying to show technique. I'm going to make this grass below it a little bit bigger. So I can show you how to shape the bottom of the tree. All right, so down at the bottom, it gets a little tricky. Um, so this will be, these will be the branches that come out the farthest right here. And then you're going to bring these around like that. So it's going to be kind of curved. If you leave it flat like that, your tree's not going to look round. If you bring the bottom of your tree at like this little half circle kind of shape here, this arc, it's going to make your tree look round. I know it doesn't look round right now because it's all flat black, but it will once we start to add highlights. So, um, same for this tree, except we're swooping upwards. So, up and in this shape. Now I'm going to add some highlights. Just adding cad yellow. And corner of my brush at the top. Hopefully this brush is not too big for this. I think this brush is too big for this really small tree. I'm going to go to this... Um, smaller bristle brush. Now, I don't want to put a highlight everywhere because if I put highlight everywhere then I don't have any shadows left. And you can go back and fix it by adding your shadows back in 
And that's usually what I have to do because I always overdo it, but it can be fixed. If you end up with just a solid green tree with no shadows, you can fix it and I'll show you how. Okay, so up here I'm just kind of going straight across. I mean, it's kind of at an angle. I'm just going with the branches that are that are already there, okay? And so here things change a little bit. They go up, they go, starts down here and then up and down. Starts down here, up and down. And here I'm going to stop about halfway through and I'm going to pick it up somewhere else. Because it's getting bigger, the tree's getting bigger down here. So if I just did a solid line all the way across, it's going to look kind of weird. So I'm going to tap, stop, pick it up somewhere else, like that. Um, and I'll show you what it'll look like if I went all the way across. That's what it would look like. And it's, it's okay, it doesn't look bad, but it doesn't look normal either. So I'm going to go back in with my black and chop that back off. So start down here. Ooh, that is really yellow. Start down here. Maybe this one goes like that. Stop it. And then go somewhere else with it. If that makes any sense. Down here, I'm going to follow that same curve, that same arc. Every branch does not have to get a highlight. I went a little bit overboard down here, so I'm going to go back in with my black. And I'm going to darken some of that back up. So now I got my highlights, or I mean I got my shadows back. Alright, now I can do this one. <clears throat> Same thing, I'm just going to go up instead of dragging it down. I'll stop and come in from somewhere else. When I say come in from somewhere else, I don't, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, but I start my highlight here, and instead of just carrying the same line over, I'm going to come over here to the opposite side and bring it somewhere not meeting up with that end. Oh know how any other way to explain that. <laughs> and then down here I'm going to follow that curve, that arc. And there we go. Come back in with a little bit of black where I might have overdone it some. Overdid it. Overdone it. Make sure under the tree is real nice and dark.
And then I can just tap some grass around it. And that's looking real flat right there, where I guess where I just put that um, that grass down. So, oh, this one's coming up. So I'm gonna fix that. It's better to paint your grass first and then put your tree on top of it. Well, these are going down. I'll get it right in a second here. Well, you don't have to go back and mess with it like I just did. And now I've literally lost all my dark underneath my tree again, but okay, we're going to move on. <laughs> Let's see, this one can be... I've painted one like this in another painting of mine, and it turned out pretty neat. I'm going to make sure I got enough room. I don't want to make them too big because I want to have enough room for lots of other things on here. So, got my trunk in there. I think I'm going to need a smaller, maybe a smaller fan brush. This one is the number one. And this time I'm just going to, I'm going to start with the corner of my fan brush on the tree trunk and I'm going to push up. I'm, on, I'm putting paint on the corner of my brush and I'm pushing up. Ooh, that one went a little crazy. And as I get further down, the branches are going to get heavier. So they're going to not be so vertical. They're going to start to droop. It's so hard to do it at this angle. This might be a good time to flip your easel if you're struggling with it like I am at this angle. <laughs> it's really hard to do. And I'm going to fill in a little bit here at the trunk. Just so it looks a little bit thicker. Oh, and that is really out of focus. Sorry. I'll make some of them a little bit longer and others. And we can do some highlights on this one. Actually, we could do we could do some snow on this one. Whoops. I'm going to dry it first. Um, I'm just going to grab some craft paint that I've got here, just a blue. I'm not going to, I'm not going to worry about like, well, 
That is complete. I'm going to go back to my small bristle brush. I don't want it quite that blue, so I'm going to mix it with some white. Make sure it's dry. And then I'm going to tap some of these branches. I'm going to do the same thing over here that I did over here. I'm not going to do like a big solid chunk of highlight. I want to break it up. Because if I went straight like that, that's, that's, it's just going to look really weird. That was one of the biggest mistakes I used to make when I was painting my tree. And then I, I, I figured that out by practicing a bunch and on accident. And I was like, man, I really wish somebody would have told me when, when I was painting trees, like in tutorials and stuff, I wish somebody would have like explained that to me. Because once I c caught on to that, it changed everything for me. And trees seem really simple to paint, but they can actually be kind of difficult. Blue. Now I'm gonna add some white, but not everywhere. I'm not gonna put blue on, or white on every single branch. Cause some of it'll be in the shadows. The blue alone looks fine. I think that looks kind of cool. Can't really see a whole lot of white against this white paper, but you get the idea. It'd be different if we had a background painted, but we don't. I didn't want to make this too complicated. I just want to focus on the trees. Let's put some snow there, some on the outside limbs. Maybe a little there. Just breaking it up. I'm not doing it everywhere. And we could do, we could put some snow on one of these, but we could do it a little bit over here, I guess. I'm not gonna mix up any blue, just some white. I like the way that white looks on the green. Now we got a little bit of snowfall on the tree. Okay, an aspen, a birch tree. One of my favorite trees to paint. Caused quite a big uproar on TikTok recently. <laughs> and I'm going to use some painter's tape. Scotch blue number 29, 2090. I'm going to stick it on my paper or your canvas, whatever you're using. Now at the top, I'm going to rip it. And then I'm going to go side to side with it so that my tree trunk is not just straight. So I'm going to start pulling this way. And I'm going to pull some that way. However you want the shape of your tree. If you want it straight, pull straight down. But I like to make mine a little crooked. 
Then I'm going to take this piece and line it back up up here. Line it back up. Down at the bottom it's going to be wider. Up here I'm going to move it just slightly closer so that the tree trunk or the yeah the tree trunk looks like it's getting skinnier as it goes up. But I'm not going to go that high. I'm going to stop like right here. Then make sure your edges are pressed down. And on one side I'm going to do shadow, which I'm just going to do black and white. And highlight on the other side. So black on one side, white on the other. I'm just going to use my brush to not really blend it a whole bunch, just A little. Just kind of wiggle my brush on there. And then you don't have to use a comb brush for this part, but I like to because it's a lot easier. And it gives me the effect that I want really quickly. This is a comb brush and it's from the Deco um, Clarity Set. So it's thinner at the top. See how it looks like it's had a haircut up here, like it's been thinned out. We'll load a little bit on this brush, wipe some of it off. So now you can see how it's separated a little bit more. And I'm going to sweep kind of like in a little little arc. That's also going to help it look like the tree is round. And then I'm going to do some bigger marks just on the side of the from the side of the brush like I'm going to lay it like this just do some bigger places um and actually I think I do the top of a birch tree I'm going to, I'm going to have to bring that on up but that's all right I can take care of that I've already got my tape there. So I'm just going to extend this up a little bit more. And then when you pull your tape away, you've got this awesome birch tree. It's nice and irregular and you've got like instant shadow and highlights. Now I have like a full video tutorial on just this, um, but that's just a small demonstration. up some green and I feel like I don't even really know what a birch tree looks like I feel like it's got big oh this is a round bristle brush it came in the set with the small one that I used over here so I'm not using black because the leaves on these are pretty light, so I'm just using black and yellow. And 
and it's kind of like big clumps. of leaves, kind of. Well, at least the picture of the, the birch tree that I'm looking at, that's how this one looks. One here. So I'm just tapping and dragging. That's what this one looks like. And then I'll do another little small one here. And I'll add some more branches in there if I have to. Uh, I'm afraid to do another one. I'm afraid to do another one. I don't wanna I don't want it to be too much. I'm going to dry it. And get more yellow this time. More yellow than that. Hmm. I'm going to have to add a little bit of white too. It's not quite bright enough. I don't paint the tops of birch trees very often. I just like painting the, the bottoms. Every now and then I might put a couple little flowers, or not flowers, but leaves, yellow leaves on some small branches. But that's usually about it. ever do this on paper either so that's a little bit of a challenge for me right now all right what else let's do a little bit of brown Oh, you can't see what I'm doing. Oh my goodness, sorry. Sorry, sorry. Um, I'm gonna take a little bit of white. I'm just gonna make like a little dirt path through here. color called chestnut. I'll make that dark again because I didn't like the white. 
Let's try the chestnut. I really didn't like the way the white and brown looked. Oh, that's much better. I'm just looking for like a little dirt through here or something. All right, with this small brush, I'm going with my black. And we'll do I don't know what kind of trees these are Do a white one too. It makes a big difference with about with um, what color you pick to put on first. And I'll show you the difference between using dark green for my shadow versus black. I like to use black. A lot of people don't. I'll show you the difference. <clears throat> and uh, I don't know what we can do. Yeah, those two are fine. I want to save plenty of room. Um, make sure this is dry. Alright, so highlights on the lighter one. I'm just going to add to one side of this tree and a little bit here and there on the other side, mostly just this side. And same for this. And you can see the big difference between using black underneath and dark green. You get a much darker tree. I would do this if I was making a like a, a tree uh, back in the distance and this would be more for like foreground so I get a darker shadow and then one more really small slightly lighter layer just to really make the highlight come out And that is way too light for that really dark tree. So 
something interesting finally happened at school today. You had a tornado uh, drill. Not a drill. It was a real. It was a real. We had a tornado like 30 minutes from here. There was an actual tornado. But it was in Paris. It was in Parisburg. Yeah, I'm glad everybody was okay. Well, I don't know if anybody was hurt in Harrodsburg, actually. That's the one day I will ever think that the school day was at least kind of fun. Kind of fun. Okay, so I had to stop my tutorial yesterday. My kiddo came home from school. Um, I was hoping I would get it done before that happened but I didn't so um, and looking back through my video yesterday I realized that I had not zoomed in while I was painting one of these little trees so I'm going to do that for you right now I'm going to paint another one uh, with it zoomed in and I'm going to do I'll do a black one and I'll do another small one uh, this is a round bristle brush. Uh oh, here comes the cat again. Just don't put your tail in my paint. Oh, dude, come on. I'm gonna have an audience. Oh, can you, let me put this where you can at least kind of see the paint. Oh, I got an audience. Uh, my nose is real stuffy today. I hope I'm not getting sick. Oh, I'm going to do one of these trees, not like a pine tree or anything. I'm not sure what these trees are called. Uh, for somebody that paints a, an awful lot of trees, I don't know very many names. <laughs> I just break mine up into like two categories, alive and dead. <laughs> I paint a lot of dead trees. <laughs> and let me grab my lights to help with the, uh, the lighting in here. I think that's a little bit better. It is currently 1.40 a.m. for me, so uh, it's a little dark. Come on, dude. Oh, I love you. You gotta get down. I think you just got paint on your tail. All right, back to the tree that I don't know anything about. All right, so I'm just gonna tap very lightly along one side. And a little bit on the other side, not as much. And then I'll go even lighter. For a little bit lighter shadow. So not over the whole thing. And that's how I generally paint all of my trees. I start with the dark color. I add a mid-tone, like a, a, a medium kind of green. And then that green is not over all of the black. So it goes like, um, I'll do a little bush and explain that. Let's do a little bush. So black all over, and when I paint my bushes, I try to make them as random as I can on the top. I mean, you can make perfectly the little round bushes. You don't have to make them random. That's how I like to make mine. Okay, black all over. 
and then I go a little bit lighter not all over and that's going to create my first layer of like shadows oops I'm sorry I'm struggling already this morning so first layer of highlights I don't go all over but it's a pretty good amount I can still see a little bit of black here and some black there and you can leave it there if you want it looks fine that's nice and dark I go one more layer of highlights but I go um, I, I don't do as much it's not everywhere so even fewer and for the last layer I always try to go outside of my original color like the black the very first color I try to go outside of that And I do that with my trees as well. Oh, that's really dark over there on that side. I mean, really light over there. Kind of fix that a little bit. Um, I can show you a little example of what it would look like if I didn't add that mid-tone, if I didn't add that first layer of green between the highlight and the black. I can show you what that would look like. And we'll do, let's do uh, just a kind of a, a tall little bush here. That's a weird shape up there. I got plenty of room, so I'm not worried about it. dry it. For the most part. And then I'm just going to go straight into the bright highlight without the green. Without the medium green, I mean. So that's what it looks like without that second layer, that medium green. So it goes black, medium green, final highlight. And this is just black and final highlight. Um, and I feel like there's a big difference. You may not be able to see much through the camera, but um, you know, there's a, a, a gradual change in shadows and highlights here. Here it's a really stark difference, but you know, if you like it to look that way, then, then go for it. Um, I'm just trying to share with you my, my techniques and what I do when I paint. Um, mostly one of those mossy trees. I gotta find somewhere to put it. Um, they get kind of big at the bottom, so I'm going to do one like right here. I'm using the round bristle brush. The really small one. Same one I just used for those trees. And I'm going to I'm gonna sweep some branches out. Actually, I'm gonna use the flat version. So these two came in the set. It came in a set. Okay, one of them is round and one of them is flat. I'm going to use the flat one because it's smaller to get these initial branches in here. And then I'll use the round one maybe to 
do the, the last part. So just sweeping, that's a big branch right there. And then I'll make them a little bit shorter here. Okay. So just make sure you got different uh, lengths and different angles and that they're hanging at kind of different angles. Hopefully I did not put those two close together. So that you can see the uh, the little hangy stuff <laughs> that I'm getting ready to paint. So I'm just gonna start right here and drag kind of kind of a little bit at an angle, like a little bit of an arc, and straight down. Oh, I think I'm gonna have to use this little brush. I'm working on, there, that's much better. I'm working on a really small scale here. Um, so what I'm doing is shorter strokes back here close to the tree trunk and then longer as I get out towards the end that one looks really weird I think I made this a little too small and close together. Um, this is a hard one to paint uh, on such a small scale. So now I'm just gonna extend just a little bit right at the ends of these branches. This is a little liner brush from the Deco Fine Detail Set. I don't really like the way this one looks at all. Um, I've painted one other one kind of like this on one of my tutorials. Like I think I said that earlier, but uh, and I didn't like the way it looked on that either. <laughs> it's just not one of my favorite trees to paint, uh, and it being so tiny, it's uh, I don't know. Let me put a couple little somethings down there. I don't know. It's a tree. It is, in fact, a tree. <laughs> and then I, I'll do a little bit of highlight on it. Maybe that'll make it look a little better. And the bristle brush really helps get that, um, that look of, like, kind of, like, individual, um, strands of whatever that stuff is hanging down. I don't know. Because uh, it's kind of scratchy. I know I use like the most technical terms ever. Hangy, hangy down stuff, scratchy. Scratchy is a word, but it just doesn't sound real professional for A YouTube tutorial but you know what I'm not a professional anyway so <laughs> that's okay all right moving on okay let's do it I'm gonna use my small bristle brush 
and I'm I'm gonna throw it right here just coming out right here in front of all of this other stuff oh dude My shoulder again. <clears throat> mm. I, don't, I don't think I got that shape real, real good, but. Buddy, come on, you gotta get down. Stop. Um, I'm gonna grab my fan brush. This is the number one. So, I don't know, man. I'm real nervous about this. So, let's just, I'm just going to start. I'm going to go. I'm just going to start blocking in here. This, the fan brush might be too big for this part. I'm just blocking in where these these big branches are gonna go I'm just kind of starting in the middle like a center point there and then just making these branches come out from there and I'm looking at a picture of a palm tree and that's kind of looks like they all come out of one little <clears throat> little area this one's kind of in the back yeah remember it's it's now 2 a.m. for me so <laughs> I hear a weird noise it's, I'm probably gonna freak out I hope I'm not doing these too far apart. Okay. <clears throat> huh, this is called chestnut. I'm going to use it on the tree trunk. My cat kind of freaked out too, and we both heard the noise. He was like, I call it snaking when he walks really low to the ground. He kind of slithers like a snake. <laughs> I'm um, just gonna tap a little bit on the side of this palm tree. palm tree tree trunk is quite a bit lighter than most tree trunks that I paint. I'm going to do a little bit of highlight on that side but it'll be fine. <clears throat> okay now I'm going to block in the, um, the hanging parts of these branches. <laughs> So shorter up here, 
I'm using the corner of my fan brush, this little corner here. And I'm just gonna start sweeping down. And I'll get more detail when I add the highlight. And then bring it down like that. So shorter back here. I'm wondering if this uh, this brush is a little too scratchy for this paper. I'm gonna try the comb brush. Let's see what happens when I do that. Let's see if that gives me a better effect. Um, so shorter. It's hard to do this direction. I don't think it's helping. And I can't tell if it's just because uh, the angle is hard for me. <clears throat> I actually just want to fill that in there so it looks a little fuller. So my, the hanging parts is just going to go right along with whatever angle I've painted. I'm going to go back to the fan brush. I feel like that might have actually been doing a little bit better. Meow. I'm just loading the corner of the brush. This one was a little bit better. I don't know. I don't paint a p enough palm trees to know this stuff. To know what brush is real easy. But I tell you what, I'm struggling right here. There, just trying to get that sharp point. I'm just going to fill that part in because maybe there's another branch hanging back there. Well, there's one right there, so. Okay, that's good enough. Now I'm going to dry it and put some highlights on there. I'm going to use my little flat bristle brush because, you know, that's, um, that's a pretty small tree. It's difficult to paint this small. It is for me. <laughs> Some people do this like all the time. Some people paint this tiny all the time and I just find that crazy. So careful not to cover up all of my uh, all of my shadows. And I already did. So I'll come back and I'll, <laughs> I'll touch it up.
it's so hard not to uh not to cover everything up i don't know why i've got like no control No self-control when there's a paintbrush in my hand. I do love to paint trees. I wish I enjoyed painting like beach scenes and stuff more. I get a lot of requests for like oceans and more water and stuff. And I just, whew, I've tried to paint the ocean and man, it is tough. It is not an easy task. Okay, hold on. Now, before I add that third layer of highlight, so I've got my black, my medium, and then I'm going to do a third layer of highlight. But before I do that, I'm going to go back in and touch up this black because, as usual, I've overdone it. I want to make it a little bit darker here in the middle so that they kind of look like they're going like this like dark the darkest point there <laughs> so i'm going to touch up some of this some of this black hmm. i would be interested in painting a bigger a bigger one of these i think i might do that next I don't paint a lot of palm trees. I'd like to try. They're pretty trees. They're beautiful. I also love big oak trees. All right, final layer of highlight. I'm gonna go with some more cad yellow and less highlights this time. And I'm going to mostly just do them along the tops here where the sun is hitting them. Got here where the sun would be hitting. This one's kind of... Okay, looks decent, um, but uh, any kind of small flat brush will be fine. Uh, let's make this tree kind of big, a big, tall, dead tree. <clears throat> so smaller, skinnier at the top and bigger at the bottom. This is going to actually be really big. I made may not have needed to do it that big but whatever i am painting on paper that's why i'm getting this little kind of weird blurry edge if i was doing this on canvas i wouldn't be getting that and i, I don't ever paint on paper like this um i'm just doing this to like save some of my canvas just for like these little uh single subject tutorials i thought it would just probably be more efficient to paint on paper instead of using a whole canvas i'm just trying to sharpen up this edge oh my goodness that went that went crazy right there all right and then skinnier at the top <clears throat> and then I'm going to use a long liner brush. Now I'm going to use this, uh, this really long liner. This is also from the Deco Enchanted set, but
but uh, again, it's discontinued. So any liner brush will be just fine. Um, I do have one from the Deco Clarity set, or the Deco Fine Detail set. If I can find it. Tell you what, I'll use the one from the Fine Detail set because this, these are not discontinued and if you wanted to grab one like this, you could. So this is the number two long liner brush. I'm gonna grab some water, wipe off the excess paint, dip it. Make sure there's no like big drops. And then I'm going to hold my brush really loosely. Okay. And then I'm just gonna like very carefully, not carefully, not carefully actually. The opposite of carefully <clears throat> very loosely just throw some branches on here oh gosh that's too much paint make some of them go up and down Make some of them long and short. More pressure here close to the tree trunk and less pressure at the end. So pressing harder, more pressure. And then I pull back on the pressure and a little less pressure at the end. And put a couple little short ones here. <clears throat> and bigger branches down at the bottom. And this paper is like soaking up my paint. It's drying super fast. Bigger branches at the bottom. And you can do as many of those as you want. I'm just going to do a couple so that you can get the idea of what I'm doing and how I do it. <clears throat> what other kind of trees do I have room for? I don't have much more room. Um, and I really can't think of any other kind of trees that I paint. Um, we can do like a little bush right here. I don't have much room for anything else. Let's do... Let's give it something to sit on. Uh, give it something to sit on. I literally just said that. I repeated myself. Some grass. Do a little patch of dirt underneath it. Back with the chestnuts, the same color I used on the palm tree over here. <clears throat> Some dirt <laughs> for it to hang on. I'm going to shape it. Let's shape it. Uh, actually, let's do it like, uh, we'll go like, uh, this. So, dirt. Dirt. <clears throat> and uh, I want 
grab my small this is the smallest fan brush that I've got uh, this is master's touch it came from Hobby Lobby not the greatest quality because it falls apart constantly oh wait sorry let me back up I'm gonna do a little bit of shadow here on this dirt where it's like coming around where it's like curved here okay now fan brush I'm just gonna do a little a little bush this uh, paper is not great for what I'm doing uh, because it's just not <laughs> I don't know it's like soaking up my paint real fast which is not a huge deal for these trees and stuff but like I don't know the texture and I keep getting all this like weird blurry stuff around the edges my liner brush again and I'm gonna oh my gosh not use that much paint and some water <clears throat> that's a clump of paint and hair all right water on my liner brush and I'm gonna extend some of these little things out What is happening to my paint? Oh my goodness, I can't get like the right consistency. Water, and there's a big cat hair on my plate. <clears throat> Artists that are also pet owners, I know you feel my pain right now. You probably know exactly what this is like. Especially if you have a needy pet like my cat is super needy <clears throat> he's such a sweet boy though mm, I kind of like this better before I did all of these little things <laughs> all right I liked it better before highlight along the outside of the grass here and kind of overlap there where the grass meets the dirt <clears throat> I'm going to dry it and do a final, or I mean, uh, the two. First layer of highlight. Oh, this is, I know I'm going to have to go back and forth with this for sure. I can already tell. And I'm just tapping and pushing out. So tap, push, 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 push.
And then I'll go back in with a little bit of dark. Because I went overboard. I didn't, I, it's, it's actually not that bad. Not as bad as I thought it was going to end up being. Just mostly around the bottom here. I want it to stay pretty dark underneath the bush. a couple of these <clears throat> pretty cool didn't turn out too bad all right I've I don't really think I've got enough space to do hardly anything else um, I mean I know I've got some space here but I don't I don't I don't really have enough to make more trees uh, plus, I, I really don't know any other ones to paint right now. These are the ones that I paint the most. Um, yeah, so that's about all I've got for today. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know in the comments what you think. If you liked today's video, give that like button a tap and please consider subscribing. You can also find me on Instagram and TikTok where I upload content almost daily. Thank you for watching.